Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about viewer requests, whether they come in in the comment section in YouTube, whether they come to me uh, via email. I try my best to be able to answer as many as I can, but oftentimes there are questions that come up from people which may be repetitive and I've answered before, or they may be really good subjects that we want to be able to address that other people may sort of like to be able to see and to hear about as well. So what I've done on the website is I've actually created an area. If you go to uh, my particular website, if you go to the AIM data section up here and scroll down, if you get to the bottom, I've actually created a form which you can complete, which will allow you to be able to enter any information that you may want me to be able to address in videos as we go forward. Now, I can't guarantee that your request will be answered. What I'll probably do is gather maybe a week or two's worth of requests that come in, see if there's commonality amongst all of the questions that are asked, and address one or two as we go forward. But this is a chance to be able to make sure that this channel gives back everything it needs. So without further ado, to get into the first question that we want to be able to address, somebody asked me earlier this year, I want to know how much time do I spend in a specific RPM band? Now they were doing some analysis on a go-kart, wanted to be able to understand where they were within the RPM band and how much time in certain areas. And so I immediately answered and said, we should use the histogram part of the Race Studio 3 analysis. But then thinking about it a little bit more, there are other ways to do this with greater levels of accuracy. So we're going to address both of those in today's video. Right, now that we're in Race Studio 3 analysis, we can look at the original answer that I gave, which is you can use the histogram to be able to understand the RPM bands that you're in for the amount of time or percentage on any given lap or session. So let's look at how we set that up in the tool. Now I've got a blank page right now that is here and I'm gonna load up the histogram. Now the histogram's here, it looks like um, uh, the graph uh, button that is here. And if I click on this particular button, you're gonna get a page that loads. Now yours might look different to this, but ultimately we want to get down to one particular view today that you can then add to your custom profile in the future. If you're wondering how to do custom profiles, there is a tutorial that's available for that and I will link to that in this video, probably in the top corners somewhere in this particular video itself. Now I want to clean this up first. So what I'm going to do is I want to just have this histogram panel that is here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to right click here and I'm going to remove this panel, which was the storyboard that you can click on each lap and understand what was going on. I'm also going to remove the time distance because I don't want that. And so it's going to give me a nice view. I'm just going to move that over a little bit of the graphs. Now you'll notice that there are two right now. One of them is associated with battery. The other is associated with RPMs. Now this is an RPM analysis. We want to be able to see what's happening with RPMs. So we need to make sure that is selected, which it is here but we don't need the battery. So if I remove that, now I'm down to a single graph that is going to plot out for us on the screen. The first is the RPM bands that are down here on this axis. And then you're gonna have the option of one of two things down the left-hand axis here. You can either have the amount of time in the given lap or session that you spent in a particular band, or secondly, you can actually have the percentage of time. So if you wanted to be able to see what percentage of the lap do I spend within a certain rev band, this is available for you to be able to have a look. Now there's a few things that we should go through with the histogram just to be able to make sure you're comfortable with how this setting is set up. Now right now it has defaulted to a rev band broken down into increments of about 350 in terms of RPM. So it's 4,000 to 4,350, 4,700 and so forth. If we want to be able to change that, we have an option. Now, if I click up here, this will choose the number of bars that it will represent that data. And all it's doing is breaking down that RPM into different increments. And so if I click here and I change this to 20, you'll see these now are broken down into 175. So effectively that's halved it again. And so you can see where you spend the amount of time. So for example, if I wanted to see what amount of time, or in this case percentage, and we'll talk about time in a minute, I spent in the rev band between 5,575 and 5,750, that's useful I can see here. Now I can hover over it and it will tell me the information that is here. It'll show me the 13.2% of the lap I spent in that area. It'll also show me that I was in that for 9.65 seconds. Now this is useful as you start getting an idea in terms of where um, you know, the power is being used at what particular RPM, and I'm sure there's a lot of applications 
But for the purposes of answering this question, we can start seeing how the system has broken it down. Now there are other options that we have here. The first is you notice this is broken down in uh, time, uh, percentage. If I want it to be time, I click here and I can change it to time. Now I could do number of samples, but we don't want that for this analysis. We just want to be able to see either the time or uh, the percentage of the lap we spent in that particular area. We do have other options to be able to have a look at as well. If I click here, I can change this and I could look at it as a line graph. Now I think in this instance, the bars are better. So let's just change that back again to the bars. Again, user preferences to how you want to look at it. The next is that you can actually see if you want the values shown. So I can show, hide the values. Um, I actually like the bar values to be there. So we'll have those sort of listed that is there. I have a few other options I can change here and I can do uh, horizontal bars if I wanted to be able to see it that way. Sometimes people like reading graphs this way. Again, it's a nice way of visually representing the data that is there. And what this has done now, it's changed the axis so you can see this is the RPM and this in this instance is the amount of time. A few other settings that are here we're not going to use because this analysis is just being able to see where you fit into that rev band. You can actually add additional channels to be able to color the graph. You can also change the way it represents in terms of adding additional variables in terms of can I slim it down to a smaller percentage range so start at 4,000 go up to 7,000 because that's the ideal rev range ignoring ignoring I should say all of the 0 to 3,500 because that's arguably a rev band that doesn't get used in this instance. For me there's a couple of other things which I like to pay attention to here for example for me personally I like to be able to see engine health and so I would use this to be able to see what percentage of the time in terms of a lap I had actually spent above 6800 RPM because two things happen there. One, you put unnecessary wear on your engine. Two, there's no power there anyway in the engine that I have, so there's no point in being there. This, this lap was pretty good, but one of the things we may want to think about is how did that represent across the entire session? So what I can do here to be able to answer that is if I click up here to where it says laps, if I click on this, I can actually go in here and right now it's on the best lap. So let's say, for example, I select five laps. What it's now done is it's representing that data in terms of all the laps that were there. I'm actually going to change it back uh, to this particular view because I like this view better to be able to explain. And you can see this is change it back for the whole session. Now you can see I'm still doing pretty well over five laps in terms of that area. Only spent one second in there and 0.3% of all of those laps together. Now one of the things you may be thinking is yours doesn't look like that when you press that button. It actually looks like that. What this is doing is it is giving you a graph for every single lap. For me personally, I like to have a graph aggregated for the whole session, but if you wanted to look lap by lap, you can do that. If yours looks like this and it hasn't followed today's tutorial, you can change it and you can go back up here and you can actually just say, I would like to see it uh, on everything rather than everything on a singular basis. Then what you can do is you can say, for example, I'd like to do it for the entire session. So I can go down here and I can select all laps. And now I can see for that session, which looks like it was anywhere around 10 or so laps that were there, what the particular analysis was. And so in answering the question, this is how I answered it for um, the, uh, the individual who asked the question on the channel. Hopefully this is useful, but for many of you, this may be as far as you want to get to. And I recommend at that point, if you don't want to get into the conversation on math channels and how that works, feel free to switch off at this particular point. And I really hope this was a helpful video for you. However, if you want to hang around for the more advanced section, now we need to think about what can we do here as relates to even more specific information as to a red band. And this is where we start getting into uh, math channels. Right, for all of you who stuck around, now we're going to be having a look at a little bit more of an advanced way of being able to analyze where you are within a rev band. Now, I actually went to AIM and asked them a little bit of help with this. And what we're actually going to use is math channels. Now, I'm quite new to math channels. I learn every day. And as I said, in this instance, I learned from AIM. So whatever I learn, I will pass on to these videos. And so hopefully this is useful for you. So as said, let's get back to Race Studio 3. We're actually going to be looking at math channels. So up here, there's a little indicator that this is your math channel setting. And I've got lots are in here, some that I've built myself, some that I have said have seeked help. And as I scroll down here, there is one that was created uh, called RPM Good Talk. And this really is a formula that allows the system to be able to create a value every time it logs data in a certain range. And so the range we have here is every time the RPM, 
which is measured by the RPM channel, is above 5,000 RPM and is below 6,500. What the system will do in this particular math channel is that every time it is above 5,000 and below 6,500, it will have an on. So basically the value will be one, it is on. If the value is zero, it is off. Then we can start measuring how much time uh, the lap or the session was in the on position and the off position. This then allows us to be able to then say, okay, let's analyze that and be able to see how do we do in a custom range? Because in this instance, we won't want AIM to decide the range, we want to decide it ourselves. So I'm going to exit out here, and oh, by the way, I will leave this math channel in the comment box below that you can import into yours if you just want to know how quickly to do that. You can either export or import here. If you click on import, it'll ask you where the file is, and you can bring it in and then use it and customize it to your particular rev bands. So I'm gonna exit out of there because it's already in my system. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add another uh, box uh, to this particular analysis. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click here and I say box, it's gonna be a panel and I'm gonna click add a panel on the right. So that's gonna show up there and I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna choose histogram. Now what that's doing is it is showing me the same data that is showing me here, but what it's done is it's just showing it on every lap. So the first thing I can do is let's just do the best lap for now and you can see how similar the analysis is in this instance. This one happens to be, for example, set on, um, let's move that to 20. This one happens to be set on 20. And you can see that, you know, if I move this in between, they're relatively the same data. So this is, again, a little bit about how to use Race Studio 3, but I think useful in this analysis. First thing you wanna be able to do is to make it so that these aren't tied. For example, if I added one in here, both of these work against the channels that I've set up. Now, I don't need battery in there, I can get rid of it, but I wanna make these independent. So I need to right click on here, click on settings. If I scroll down to the bottom, I can use allow different channels in different panels. That means that instead of all of the boxes, all of the um, groupings here working in the panels together on the same data from here, what's gonna happen in this instance is they're gonna be independent. So I'm gonna click on there for that one, and I'm gonna scroll down in settings, and I'm gonna click on the same thing here, which allows us to be able to see different information. Now what I need to do is actually go and put different data in here. So I'm gonna scroll down, and if you remember earlier, we were talking about uh, the good torque, which can be named anything you want, good RPM range, whatever it is. So here's the channel, here is the one, which is the indicator of when it's switched on. So what I wanna be able to do here is I wanna turn it on, and I wanna specify where it is. So I'm gonna right click in it, and I'm gonna say show in, and this second histogram, and you can see it's a second histogram because it's got those two markers on the either side. If you're wondering which is which, you can always go up here and you can click on this and it will show you which one of these two is actually on. You know, this is the first one, this is the second one. And this is the first one, this is the second one because I created second. So I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say, please show it in histogram number two. Now, you're starting to see the information that is there, but let's customize this using the technique we used earlier. First thing I wanna be able to do is I wanna make this as small as possible because it's on and on off. If this could be two, it would be absolutely perfect because then I could see without any gap in between. But notice as well, it's not showing the other variable, so I need to make it so that it shows everything. And now you can see that it's showing me the information that I need. So on this particular lap, when the marker was switched as a one and it was on, um, this is set to percentage, 78.7% of that lap was in the good torque or the good range that I specified, leaving 21.3% wasn't. Now I can change those particular things and say, well, how did I do for the whole session? So if I click up here in laps and I want to do all laps, the system's going to do the same thing we looked at earlier. So what I want to do in this instance is I want to see as a session as a whole. And there we go, we can see that information. So now. I have the predetermined setup that the histogram created by AIM, plus I also have my own custom configuration that shows me over the whole session, 67.9% of the lap was spent in the good range and 32% was spent outside of that. Now, whether you're looking at gearing, whether you're looking at uh, whether you're using too much revs over a certain threshold, you can change that. And one of the things that I've actually done 
is if I go back to the math channels, I've actually created it so that I can get an idea of, am I staying in the gear too long? If I scroll down here, for example, I've actually said bad talk, which is above 6,500 RPM and below 8,000. At this particular point, this is the red band where you get almost no power and you increase your chance of doing bad things to your engine. And so hopefully this additional piece of information is of use. Obviously, Race Studio 3 analysis requires a bit of configuration and customization. But once you've done it, one of the things that I will say is that I forgot to do this earlier before I recorded this most advanced setting and had to go back and actually uh, rebuild it is click up here and click on Save Profile. Now this will save that view for you to be able to use every time you go through it. At this particular point, I just want to be able to say thanks so much for watching this video. If you got all the way to the end and watched the more advanced part, uh, great. Hope this was really useful for you. Remember, you can put all this data in other parts of Race Studio 3 analysis, like uh, channels reports and all sorts of things. But this is just a simple way of being able to see it. If you want to be able to support the channel, give it a thumbs up uh, and a like. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that's great. Hopefully we'll do a lot of videos this year. And there's also a little tip button at the bottom, which just helps be able to fund the channel, you know, paying for video editing software or camera gear or whatever need be. And it just helps with vlog. However, totally optional. If you've watched and watched to hear, Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video. And oh, by the way, if you want something for you, go to that box on the uh, website, add in what you're thinking about. You never know, you might be part of one of the next videos coming up. So thanks all to, uh, thanks very much to all of you and speak to you all again soon.